What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of Player Ratings as we had a glorious win under the lights at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium last night against NK Mura 5-1 on the night. But that doesn't really tell the whole story. Uh, but let's get into the Player Ratings. Let's start off with Pierluigi Golini. Um, I gave him a six, Sim gave him a five, and yeah, the only reason I gave him a six really, he had nothing to do pretty much all game, so couldn't mark him down, couldn't mark him up, so I gave him just a bit average, above yeah. average. I just gave him just average, <laughs> I mean, he literally didn't touch the ball, he, t he picked the ball out of the back of the net, it's literally the only time he touched it, so can't really rate him anything, to be honest. Yeah, uh, let's move on to Matt Doherty. Uh, Sim gave him a five, I gave him a four, I thought uh, he was a letdown last night once again in a game. Um, against really poor opposition, you expect uh, him to put in some kind of performance. I mean, we say this in every kind of game he plays. And again, nothing from Matt Doherty, nothing from him going forward. He didn't really have to do much defensively. And I thought his passing was wayward once again. Yeah, I thought in build-up play it was OK. But once it got to the final third again, just so awful. Like, he just can't pick out a man inside the box. It's, like, impossible for him to do it. Literally. It's, like, it's just not possible for him to pick out a man inside the box. And even even passing it uh, in, in, in field is, uh, is a problem for him. And uh, you expect him to create a few chances against that kind of opposition. Get some whips and balls in or um, even maybe get on the end of something. Get a shot on goal. But, again, in the final third, found wanting. And if he can't do it against Mura, I don't know who he can do it against. Exactly. Uh, let's move on to Christian Romero. Sevens all round from us. And I thought it was a good display from him. Albeit he wasn't really challenged that much defensively. But I thought what he did do, he did very well. Come stepping out from defence, being aggressive uh, with their attacking line. And just really comfortable, assured on the ball. And, you know, you just don't worry when he's on the ball. And I want to see him start um, pretty much the majority of games now. Yeah, he was good. Really aggressive. Um, didn't give the Mura strikers an inch for the whole game. Stepping in front of them, anticipating passes, really good. Clipping um, little passes into midfield as well, which was really nice to see. A bit of composure on the ball. So good display for Romero. Yeah. Let's move on to Joe Roden. Sim gave him a six. I gave him a seven. Um, just like Romero, I thought he wasn't really troubled for the majority of the game. And I thought, um, you know, again, he was a good presence on the ball. Um, I thought he used the ball quite well. Uh, cut, um, when, you know, aerial ability, there was just that one moment that worried me when he kind of dribbled it out from defence and he got caught with the ball where, you know, a better quality side probably would have taken more advantage of that and scored the goal. But I'm not going to mark him down for that. I think I thought it was a good display from Roden and as well, I'd like to see him get more minutes as well. Yeah, that's the only reason pretty much so he got a six instead of a seven because that, cause that moment. Um, other than that, it was an easy night for him. Um, he controlled the back line with Romero pretty effectively. Um, but yeah, he nearly gave away a bad situation, so that's why he's uh, got Romero a bit higher. All right, let's move on to Sergio Regulon. Sim gave him a six, I gave him a five. Um, he was our marauding left back on the night. He was getting in some really good positions, actually, and I think if he had a bit more composure in front of goal, uh, probably would have got on the score sheet. So that's pretty much the only the only reason I marked him down is I thought he was good, but that his lack of composure in front of goal and his lack of end product really. Uh, did it for me. Yeah, would have liked to see him a bit more in the f in the final third, whipping in some crosses. But I think his build up play linked up fairly well with Hill at times on the left hand side. Um, defensively, obviously, had nothing to do, and I thought he was pretty much as a left winger most of the time. So the fact he didn't get too many opportunities, he had that one opportunity where he was in on goal, but he kind of slipped at the wrong moment and um, didn't end up scoring. But unfortunately, so unfortunately, that was the case. But yeah, wasn't a great display, but it wasn't terrible. Yeah. Let's move over to Oli Skip. Sim has given him a seven. I gave him an eight. I thought he was brilliant. I really did. I thought um, he was dominating in midfield, putting in challenges, being aggressive, um, you know, spraying some nice passes as well. Uh, got a shot off, I think, we're about 20, 25 yards out that just went past the post. This guy has got to be a mainstay in midfield. I know I've said it for Romero and Roden now, but, you know, Skip as well. He's been probably our best midfielder this season, and long may it continue. Yeah, was well, I thought it was good. I thought his passing could have been a bit better, but I thought on the off the ball, obviously second to none, um, really uh, puts himself about. We can see that his chat. The, the I, I do kind of feel like he slides a bit too much. He slides a lot. Skip. Yeah. He does go to ground very easily. Maybe he's got to watch out for that because one day he'll give away a penalty or a foul or something. But off, yeah. other than that, like he was really solid, and um, it was a good day for him. 
All right, let's move over to Harry Winks. Uh, sevens all round from us. Um, found his level once again, Harry Winks, in the kind of group stages of uh, the Europa League and Europa Conference League. And I thought it was a good display. The first two goals, um, he started both of those moves. He was, a com- he was like a calm presence in there in the middle of the park. More forward passes than backward passes in there from Harry Winks. But I felt as the game wore on, I mean, did he get taken off early, Winks? Or did he play the 90 minutes? Um, did he go off for Hoybier? Can't remember. No, Skip went off for Hoybier. So no, he played ninety minutes. So he played ninety minutes, but I felt like as the game wore on, I mean, he started with with good influence, but I think as the game wore on, he kind of ran out of that influence. Yeah, I did. I think it was just an average display from uh, Winks. I think he, I think he was he was one of the players who was really trying to get the ball forward quickly, which was good, and um, it, it it kind of he there was a bit of a spark, but. It wasn't too much like uh, serious uh, damage done from Winks being on the pitch. I think he just um, c- contributed to knitting the play together very well, um, keeping possession and keeping the ball moving quickly, which uh, that's pretty much his game. Delhi Ali, uh, Sim gave him a four, I gave him a five, and the reason I gave him a five, he scored a penalty. That's why I gave him a four. Literally, that's all he did all game. He got he got in a good position to win the penalty, but um, you know, <laughs> if if the keeper doesn't make that rash challenger, you're talking about Deli Ali. What are you doing there? Just missing yeah. the ball. And, yeah, I and thought he got lucky to get top. that penalty. He did get lucky. Uh, that's he what tried a to stupid say. flick. I yeah. don't know what he's trying. That's what just I'm put trying the ball to say. in the net. Um, you know, he did he did have one like curling effort as well. Apart from that, but yeah, you know, say, yeah. apart from those two moments. He offered literally nothing throughout that game. Um, tricks and flicks that weren't coming off. Um, no real aggression in there. And I think that he played that that role where everyone thinks he's more suited to a bit further up the pitch. And he just didn't impact the game whatsoever, really. Yeah, I mean, I felt like he was just sloppy in possession. Every t- I felt it was a bit selfish as well. Um, the, his passing was not quick enough for uh, uh, to try and get players in behind wasn't able to service the forwards that effectively obviously he had a couple of moments with the penalty he had one moment as well I remember on the left hand side that nice cheeky nutmeg and a nice dribble but didn't release the ball early enough and ended up getting tackled and that's just the story of Delhi Ali isn't it it's just yeah. so frustrating uh, in that final third so He's got to sharpen up his game if he really wants to be a mainstay in the team. If he puts c- continues to go like this, uh, he's going to be out of the team again. Yeah, and you know, he was visibly upset when getting substituted, but I don't understand what he expects. No, yeah, I mean, I mean, he was too slow on the ball again. He needs to be sharper. He needs to be quicker, quicker thinking. And he just uh, dawdles so much. Yeah, the deli dally. Uh, let's move on to Giovanni Lo Celso. Eights all round. And me personally, he was my man in the match on the night. Um... The, the goal, his goal for our, was it our second goal? Absolutely beautiful finish. The way he took it into the box as well, lovely goal from him. After that, he kind of went missing out on the right hand side um, until the subs came on, and then he really did strut his stuff when he moved into the centre. He was pretty much central uh, to everything Spurs were doing. I think he got two assists uh, after he moved into that role. Uh, so good display from Gio, and uh, long may it continue. Yeah. Good stuff. The finish for the first goal as well was really underrated. Really curled it into the top corner. Very tough one to stop. So I've got to say that was good. It was good movement as well to get into that position. So he did well there. Then yeah, he went. It was a bit wasteful for that for the rest of the first half. He was getting seeing quite a bit of the ball, but wasn't nothing was really coming off for him on the right hand side. But once he moved centrally, uh, he was a different player. Different player. He was playing some really superb um, through balls to Sonny, Regulon, I remember. Obviously, a pinpoint through ball to Kane for his third goal. Um, so, some really uh, effective passing uh, from Giovanni Lo Celso. So, uh, he looks a lot more at home in the centre. That's all I was saying. And, um, it was a really effective. Last half an hour, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Brian Hill. Sim gave him a five, I gave him a six. I mean, the effort, the energy, the aggression was definitely there from Brian Hill, who was definitely uh, trying to find those pockets of spaces. But I felt that um, he was just lacking in a bit of quality in this game. He wasn't getting on the ball and beating men uh, time and time again like he was, like he has done uh, whenever we've seen him in a Spurs shirt so far. I just thought, you know, he was getting caught on the ball quite a few times and his passing wasn't really um, up to scratch yesterday. But, you know, you can't fault him on work rate, can you? No, I just, yeah, I feel like against this level of opposition, it should be meat and drink for him. And um, unfortunately, he struggled to really make an impact in the final third, which was... uh, um I don't, about call, I don't know if I would say it was worrying, but it was something of note. And you would have thought in this kind of game, he would have taken it uh, by the scruff of the neck, be being players for fun, trying to create opportunities. But it didn't really happen for him. His passing was off, dribbling, he got caught a few times. 
and I want to see a bit uh, more in this kind of game from Hill than I saw, unfortunately. Yeah. And start and rounding off the starting eleven, uh, Dane Scarlett. Uh, Sim gave him a four. I gave him a five. Um, I struggled to to mark him as low as four uh, because you know, seventeen year old kid coming into the team uh, with a. Um, definite lack of service as well and obviously we only started to get services to the front line when we brought on uh, the big guns in the second half um, I thought he you know he was he was dropping deep a few times trying to uh, create some nice link up play he did get a few uh, short passes off but ultimately uh, didn't really get involved too much at all and I blame that more on on the service he got than actually him I just think he was anonymous, unfortunately, in this game. I don't think he's physically ready to be starting um, competitive games, well, especially as a lone striker. I don't think he's ready for that. And he struggled to really get involved in the game. He had one really good moment where he was a good dummy and a nutmeg um, on one of the Mira players, but he didn't have the pace, unfortunately, to get on the end of it. And he just, I think, like, you know, sometimes you need a bit of strength and a bit of speed to get away from defenders. And I don't feel, I don't feel like he had that. He wasn't able to create any openings. And against this level of opposition, if he was struggling that badly, then it tells me he's not physically ready. So I've just thought it was anonymous, unfortunately. Not, uh, it's, it's nothing against Scarlett. He shouldn't, we shouldn't be relying on him. Um, at this stage of uh, his career so that's, that's just the reality for me alright uh, Harry Kane who also came on uh, with about 35 was it 35 30 minutes to go uh, Sim gave him an 8 I gave him a 9 and yeah look what can you say Harry Kane he, he does what Harry Kane um, has been doing throughout his Spurs career albeit not at the start of this season in the Premier League but got a hat trick to his name three nice finishes was in the right place at the right time and you can't really ask for more uh, than what Harry Kane gave on the pitch yesterday yeah for me it just shows the level of opposition about how easy it was for Kane to come on and score three goals he barely without uh, barely having to really get in the game I think that was his only three shots of the game I don't remember him having any of the shots it was just simple not simple finishes but it was simple um, positioning and finishing from Kane to get him uh, in, in those positions he didn't have to do too much and that was that that showed the level of opposition he was at it was very easy for him so um, I only gave him an 8 because you know I think against, against that level of opposition you could even get more if he, if he, if he was uh, having more shots and stuff like that so um, yeah look he did well came on got a hat trick killed the game for us but that's it really all right, Kyung Min Son, Sim gives him a seven, I gave him an eight, and I thought the guy uh, frightened the life out of the Mura defence when he came on. You saw as soon as he came on, he was running at their defence, he was creating opportunities, um, he got, he was getting down the byline, even going through the centre of them. I thought he was brilliant when he came on, I really did. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we need to see uh, him and Kane be doing this in the Premier League. Yeah, his movement, I think, was the difference between someone like him and Hill. I think Hill, a bit like uh, Lucas, in a sense, he likes the ball to feet. He doesn't like to stretch. He doesn't, what we've seen so far anyway, doesn't like really running in behind and um, trying to attack the space like Son does. Son does that so effectively. And he did it from the first minute. You saw, as soon as he came on, Lo Celso plays the ball through to him, all of a sudden he's into the space and taking players on. That's what Hill's got to learn when he's in that position. But yeah, Sonny was, uh, obviously came on, got an assist for Kane, was, um, and again, Again, another player would say it was just a, it was too easy for him at times in that, yeah. that, that game. And this probably also uh, counts for the next player in Lucas Mora. Sim gave him a seven, I gave him an eight, and pretty much uh, repeat what we said about Luke uh, about Human Son because I thought he uh, he put in a really good display. Lucas again frightening the life out of the Mura defence, running at them, giving them no end of problems, grabbed himself an assist just, just as Sonny did as well. Uh, so good display from Lucas. Yeah. Um, it was uh, he got a good assist for Kane's first goal, really good through ball, and um, again another player where they couldn't get the ball off him. It was very simple for him, um, so that's why I gave him a seven. All right, and last but not least, Pierre Emohoibier. Sim gave him a six. I gave him a seven. I thought he came on with a lot of energy. Um, you know, <laughs> to be honest, I was going to say he he gained us control of that midfield, but it was hard not to gain control of that midfield because we had control for pretty much the majority of the game. So I think Hoybia definitely came on with a lot of energy, uh, more energy than he showed in the North London derby, which is very annoying. Um, but I felt like, do you think that that substitution indicates Skip will start this weekend? Um, potentially. But I, 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 I didn't, so I didn't see the, feel need. the need to bring him on. It was three one up. I didn't see the need to bring on Hoybier. So maybe it was to protect Skip. But um, maybe. But yeah, I think he he helped shore up the team. And obviously we we'll, we we'll build a platform to get a few more goals. Didn't think he did anything particularly un unbelievable. But 
I, th- I thought it was a solid uh, cameo from Hoybier. Yeah. All right. Emerson came on as well, but we're not going to give him a rating for, who was hardly uh, saw much of the ball, to be honest. Uh, but let's move on to Nuno Espirito Santo. Sim gave him a six. I gave him a seven. Maybe on reflection, six is probably the fair remark. Um, but, you know, he started the lineup, which should have been more than capable to go out there and smash Mura for 90 minutes. It really should have. We got those two goals in, inside seven minutes. Fair enough. But after that, the team just pretty much dropped off until the subs came on. And we needed those subs to come on and actually close out the game for us, which I'm not sure if I'm going to put that down to the players or the way Nuno set us up or, or, or the way Nuno kind of um, galvanises these players. So I'm not sure, really sure what to put it down to. But ultimately, Nuno did make the changes um, that stilled us off the game. So, yeah. Not much to say on Nuno, to be honest. Yeah, I was I was a bit disappointed we had to use those three players um, yeah, in, in the manner we'd had the manner we did on the sixty minute mark uh, at two one. I I don't think I I don't think uh, Mura were going to get back in the game, but the momentum was definitely getting a bit more in Mura's favour, and that's disappointing considering the level of opposition they are, the quality we had on the pitch, and the fact as well that for the we were tuning up after seven minutes, and then we took pretty much the rest of the first half off. And then come the second half, uh, you would have thought Nuno would have gotten into them in the set in the in half time and thought and said, "Tell them, look, it's two 0 but let's just kill this game off early in the second half, and then we can take it easy and let's just um, you know have a fast start to the second half." And we didn't. We didn't have a fast start. We stuck, came out sloppily. We let Mura back in the game. I know it was a goal which you can't really account for, but it was a consequence of Mura gaining in a bit of influence in the game and um, the fact that we had that we had to call our. Uh, three star player four frontline players uh, into the game to kind of seal the game off was a bit disappointing and as well it was a bit disappointing however we did end up winning 5-1 there were no injuries uh Kane scored a hat-trick we did end up winning the game comfortably so uh in the moment, it's more positive than negative but unfortunately there are a few negatives to that situation yeah I mean it's just very annoying how now against Passos and against Bura we've had to rely on these players to come on to, to seal the game off for us it's very annoying and very it's just not warranted I mean the players on the pitch yesterday were more than good enough to go out there and win 5-0 yesterday yeah we didn't have to bring all three of them on but that's what Nuno felt I guess and I felt that also he should have kept Dane Scarlett on for the 90 minutes um, because he was just not in that game uh, for the opening 60 minutes because of the lack of service and I felt that if he would have brought on a Sonny and a Mora and maybe left Kane on the bench and brought Dane Scarlett on maybe Dane could have uh, saw, saw some joy with that but wasn't to be in Kane on, Kane came on and got the hat trick anyway. So um, look, it is what it is. We won five one yesterday, so I don't want to be too negative, but it's hard not to be with the kind of everything surrounding Tottenham Hotspur right now. Um, but yeah, that is it. That is your player ratings. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree with our ratings. If you disagree, put your ratings in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.